announcement sheet is a reminder of when Bible school is. That's coming up and you may hear families or your family want to know those dates. So wanted you to definitely be aware of that. Also wanted to draw your attention during our prayer time, the shawl that is hanging here today will be the, uh, a prayer blanket that we will give to Pastor Connie Markle and when she arrives next week. So we let this be part of your prayers and I will carry it. It will be back in the back as you leave. So let us then, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, you have created the earth. You have created humanity. You have sent your son to love us, to teach us, and to redeem us. Lord, we come now to lift our voices in praise, our voices in worship, our voices in prayer, to come together with one another, to be strengthened in our faith and in our walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then as we welcome you, would you stand and greet one another.
Good morning. My name is Julie Bridges. Please stand as you are able to join me in our call to worship. You can find it in your bulletin. Lift praises to the name of our God. Bless God's name forever. How great is our God. From generation to generation, we will sing your praises and speak of your goodness. Great is our God and worthy of praise. God, you are just and kind in all your doings. Great is our God and worthy of praise. God, you watch over us in love and hear the desperate cries of those who call to you. How great is our God. How great is our God. Bless God's name forever. Please remain standing and join in singing our opening song, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 577 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
join me in our prayer for illumination. You can find it in your bulletin. Holy, 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 merciful, eternal, and mighty, by your grace you have shown us who you are, one in three and three in one. We glorify you as Trinity, even as we worship you in your unity. Open our hearts to receive your word to us today, that not only in our worship, but in our lives, we may serve and reflect your triune love all our days. Amen. You can find the scripture reading, 1 Samuel 17, verses 32 through 49, on page 228 in your pew Bible. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. 
Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of this Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand into his bag, took out the stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we stand and sing number 473. As soon as I find it. Lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness, make thy way plain before my face, for it is thou, Lord, thou, Lord, only that may don't know who I am. My name is Ryan Russell. I am one of the associate pastors at First United Methodist Church in Iowa City, and I have the pleasure of being with you again this week, um, so thank you for having me. Um, and you will, well, and I will be appointed actually to First Church starting next week, so um, as from a staff person to a, a pastor there. So, um, so today's scripture uh, is about David and Goliath. So um, and I, today we're going to talk about how David and Goliath, uh, how David's gifts were used by God, um, and how your gifts can be used by God. So in many United Methodist churches, today marks the end of the leadership of one pastor, and next week the beginning of ministry of the next pastor that will be among you. Uh, growing up United Methodist, I remember getting a new pastor, probably I think it was like four times in my, my childhood, and the change that occurred within my church. When I was about eighth grade, I was asked to serve on, at that time, what we called the PPR committee, but now is the SPRC committee. Um, and a couple years later, I was asked, uh, or we did receive a new church at that time. Our other pastor retired and, and the new one was being appointed. 
All that time it all the time it took uh, to work with the district superintendent and with the congregation to put our profile together brought the church a sense of not only fear but excitement of what could be. And if I might add, don't ever put a middle school kid on SPRC. <laughs> I was a little too young and didn't know what I was getting into. But if you're, I think late high school is okay. But don't do that to your youth. Even though the discipline says to do it, don't do it. Um, our clergy appointment system has its advantages and its disadvantages. Looking, so let's take a second and look at the congregational church model, which is a call system. One advantage of that might be that we could con con take considerable time to get over what the last pastor gave you and figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are as a church and work to be ready for that new person. That doesn't mean that it that doesn't mean that you will not transfer what you've learned from that new pastor and the expectation to the, the, to the new one from the old one. But what it does mean is that it may be somewhat less likely to happen, or that if it did, the church would be more, much more conscious, consciously aware of its effect on that new person and be able to correct itself much easier. We can get attached to those we love and who love us. More than this, we get attached to how those we love love us. Indeed, we get attached to how they do every little thing that they do. And those attachments and the emotional bonds that come with them abide. Even when the person to whom we originally had attached themselves or unattached themselves and is no longer among us or no longer functioning in the same capacity that he or she did in the past, which is what my church is dealing with with me. And if the person is gone or the role has changed, those attachments down to how the other person did everything have every way of shifting from attachments to unconscious expectations. And the reality is, those expectations for how every little thing will be done hardly ever fit with that new person. So we enter a, the, this final ser uh, service from uh, Pastor Alexis's leadership among you and remember a season of how. That through <clears throat> this season of how in our church marked by appointment this can often be a season of disappointment as we find the new person or situation doesn't do every little thing the same way that the previous pastor did. But instead, it could be a season of re-enchantment, a season in which we discover how this new person can do things or other things, do these or other things, some different and some familiar. Most likely, it's a mixture of both. Today's story from the scriptures is, a, is full of other possible angles that you may not have thought of. We could talk about the typical underdog beats the big bad bully. Or we, or we could frame it as the Lord using this humble but yet confident smaller person to defeat the boisterous big bad bully. Or... We could follow Malcolm Gladwell's take that Goliath was doomed from the start because he had a vision disorder as part of his giant size. But today we're going to focus on just four verses of the text, uh, verses seven, thir 37 through 40. It is, it is this part of the story that a lot of us just might pass over, maybe because the rest of it is so much more exciting and this part is a little weird maybe even a little humorous 
David has accepted the challenge to face the Philistines, <coughs> Goliath, and one-on-one. -on -one. If you're going to fight an army, an army's champion, you should look like your army's champion, right? Isn't it that, isn't that what you expect to see? <coughs> After all, Goliath, Goliath did, his very impressive armor is described in some detail in verses 5 to 7. It weighed about 150 pounds. <clears throat> and you would need a sword, a bronze helmet, and a prestigious coat of mail, which is another word for armor in the Bible. Because of what a champion wore, that's because that's what they wore at that time. And that's how they did their battles. The trouble is that Saul, the Saul's gear that he put onto David didn't fit him. It was way too big, it was way too heavy, and David couldn't even walk in it. So he decided he wasn't going to do that. It's fu always funny to see people dressed in outfits that aren't quite normal and that don't fit them when they're kids and they're playing dress up. But, the, but even the very end of verse 39 where it, and into 40 isn't funny. But maybe most important, the most important thing is that of the whole story, especially when we find ourselves in this season of how. David took the armor Saul placed on him, took, took it off, all of it. Then he got his own stuff that he knew how to use, a shepherd's staff, his bag, some smooth stones from the wadi or the river, and a sling. And the rest of the story is legendary and you know that. All because he took his armor off, his armor took off the armor, someone else put on him and used the gifts, the tools, and the skills that he knew best. And King Saul let him do that. In a season of how we're, <clears throat> we're most, almost destined, or in, any, in our good United Methodist term, appointed to transfer our expectations of how our current pastor did every little thing <coughs> onto the new one we receive. The swiftness of the transition period in the United Methodist Church, essentially none, as the trustees know, has no and no interim pastor um, makes it inevitable that this might happen. We will be like Saul, clothing David in his armor. Maybe the fit won't be nearly as comical for how our next leader will do every little thing. Will never or ever be perfect. If we try to play Saul's part. At this point, when we're putting on that armor, we'll be disappointed, and we won't be able to help that. But we have the option in this season, we have the option that Saul eventually took. One of letting David do what David could do with his gifts, his tools, and skills. This, this one we should have to choose con consistently and consciously because unconsciously we'll transfer our expectations every time. So the experience some disappointment. So we will experience some disappointment. We may not even be aware that that's happening or have a name for it, but it is happening. And this is what it is. <clears throat> Transference happens essentially when there's one, someone in a new role occupied by someone we loved, admired, or respected. And some disappointment happens as well. But if we choose to let our next leader use her gifts, tools, and skills, if we consciously say to ourselves and one another, I don't know how this next person will do what she does, but I'm looking forward to discovering how she does it. We won't get rid of it. all of the feelings of disappointment, 
that we have. <clears throat> but we'll set ourselves up for that re-enchantment rather than that disenchantment. And we'll set her up to act confidently in, with her, in and with her gifts, tools, and skills. And who knows what Goliath will see fall when we do. Today, as we may be on the edge or the middle of some sort of season of how, and that's why when we have a baptism in a few minutes, we will, re- we will reaffirm our baptisms as a group and remember that we all are children of God. Because in baptism, we remember that we're all supposed to be what we're all supposed to be about. It is in baptism that the Holy Spirit first starts pouring spiritual gifts into our lives. It's in this community living this baptism covenant together. And we're learning how to use our gifts and to live as Christ's representatives of mission with him in the world. And it's always this triune God, source and end of all, that we move through every season of transition from what to why to who and to how. Brothers, sisters, and siblings in Christ, lay down your burdens that you have that you don't even realize in this place and to one another. Then come to the water and walk, run, and live free. Amen. We'd like to invite Ethan and uh, those he's bringing with him to come forward.
that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him, that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. And to all, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan, to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. To declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it. To wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ he may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Ethan Brady Loomer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the people said, Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit worked within you, Ethan, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Members and friends of the, United, of the West Branch United Methodist Church, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit worked within all of us that have been born through water and the Spirit. We may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Now it is our joy as we welcome our new brother, Ethan, in Christ. Through, through baptism, baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend Ethan to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our prayers. 
presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish us and strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may live in grace and peace. And now, Ethan, I'm going to borrow it. <laughs> These are your new family. You still have the old ones, but it just got a lot bigger today because these are now your brothers and sisters. Yeah, I look kind of suspiciously at them too. We have baby shoes. Okay, that's all the shoes. And then I'm glad to have you. Remember, Pat Pendergast Mahaffey, her husband Charles Mahaffey was a Methodist pastor and served Asbury Methodist in Cedar Rapids for 25 or more years. Pat's daughter Robin, Pat and her daughter Robin have attended our church every now and then for special occasions. Robin's daughter Day, or Daisy, lives in Hilton Head. Robin's daughter Daisy has a daughter named Charlie who was 11. Friday, Charlie and her dog were crossing the street and were hit and killed. So uh, thoughtful prayers uh, would be welcomed by uh, the Mahaffey family. For today's prayer time, I will, we will um, build the moment of the silent prayers within the, the, the text. Um, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll respond, hear our prayer. And then there will be a followed by a moment of silence. Let us pray for the church and the world together. Grant, Almighty God, that all those who confess your name may be united in your truth. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give us all a reverence for the earth 
as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly. And in this service of and in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and join in the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Ludzi. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. You can find it in your bulletin. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not with our lips only, but with our whole lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of all our days into a living sacrifice to you. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our closing song, number 519, Lift Every Voice and Sing, found in the United Methodist Hymnal.
receive the blessing. Remember that you have gifts, and God calls us all to use our gifts. As we go about our week, know that the Holy Spirit is with you. Amen. Give me a chord, please. Holy, holy.